You should be checking your router's Wi-Fi transmitting power regardless of the setup you have in your home network. Whether you have just a router, whether you have a mesh system in place with multiple access points, or if you have a router and a Wi-Fi extender, you'll be wanting to check what that Wi-Fi transmitting power is. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking more power is always better, right? That's what we need to verify. Well, believe it or not, that's not actually always the case. So in this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be showing you how you can check the Wi-Fi transmitting power of your router. And on top of that, I'm going to be explaining when you might want to turn this Wi-Fi transmitting power down. Before we move forward, let's make sure we're on the same page with Wi-Fi transmitting power. It's actually exactly how it sounds. It is the power with which your router broadcasts your Wi-Fi networks in your home. So what we're talking about here, with most routers, you have three options. You have high power, medium power, and low power. And what are the situations where you would want to use each of these different settings? Well, let's walk through a few examples here so I can show you exactly when you might want to use these different settings. Okay, let's say in this first example, you have a router in your home network and that's it. In these cases, you want to make sure that you're using a high Wi-Fi transmit power so that way you're maximizing the Wi-Fi signal in your home. So in this example, we have a router in the corner here with high transmit power, but you can still see that the Wi-Fi signal is still not covering all of your home. There are still some gaps here where there's not a Wi-Fi signal. So what do you do? Well, let's talk about what not to do. For one, we don't want to change the Wi-Fi transmit power from high to low because then as you see here, we have an even larger dead space where we're not getting a Wi-Fi signal. So what we want to do, we want to turn it back to high and then what we want to do is we want to move that router to a location in our home where we're covering the entire area or the entire square footage of the home network. So let's go back to this first example here. Let's say for some reason you can't move your router to the center of your home network. What you can do instead is you can actually implement another access point or another device that broadcasts Wi-Fi signal. You can use an access point, you can implement a mesh system here, or you can use an old router as another access point. I've detailed how to do that in a previous video, so that's another option here as well. So let's say we add that second device to our home network. We now have an access point in a router. Both of them are broadcasting Wi-Fi at high power. And as a result, what you get in here is signal overlap. What this signal overlap is, is it basically means it's an area where a device in this given area will have a Wi-Fi signal to both the router and the access point. Where this could hurt you is if you're standing here closer to your router, your device could still be connected to the wireless access point just because it still has a decent connection or a decent Wi-Fi signal to it. You may be sacrificing bandwidth here though because if you have a weaker Wi-Fi signal to your access point and that's what you're connected to, you're likely to get less bandwidth than if you're connected to this router. So what we can do is we can minimize that and we do that by reducing the Wi-Fi transmit power of these devices. So first what we'll do, we'll turn the router from high transmit power to medium transmit power. We do the same thing for our wireless access point. And what we get, we get a much smaller area of signal overlap. Now don't get me wrong, you still wanna have some signal overlap in your home, so that way you don't have any dead spots but at the same time, you wanna limit the amount of signal overlap, just so that way you can maximize the amount of bandwidth that you're getting at any given point in time, because it increases the likelihood that you're connected to the device that's providing you with a stronger Wi-Fi signal. In summary, if you only have a router in your home network, you'll probably wanna have your Wi-Fi transmit power set to high, but with these multiple devices, this is something to play around with. If you're finding that you have this signal overlap, or you're connected to a device with a weaker Wi-Fi signal, when you're thinking you should be connected to another device like your router with a stronger Wi-Fi signal. Another instance when you might want to reduce your Wi-Fi transmit power is if you're living in a small apartment, let's say it's an apartment complex, you're sharing walls with your neighbors. 
In those cases, you might be able to reduce your Wi-Fi transmit power, still cover your entire apartment, but then also minimize the amount of interference that you're providing to the nearby apartments. The hope here obviously is that your neighbors are doing the same thing, but if everybody is minimizing the amount of Wi-Fi interference that they have with the nearby apartments, then everyone can enjoy their internet without any issues. Another example that's often brought up when it comes to limiting Wi-Fi transmit power is if your router is at the edge of your home or it's on an outside wall, and as a result, you have a Wi-Fi that's broadcasted into, say, the street or your nearby neighbor's house, People have said that this is a security risk because it gives people the opportunity to drive by your home, connect to your Wi-Fi router, and then compromise your home network. I see this point, but at the same time, if you're doing your due diligence and securing your Wi-Fi networks, you have complex passwords for your Wi-Fi networks, and you're securing your router as you should, you really shouldn't have to worry about this especially if you're following the steps that I detailed in a previous video that breaks down how to secure your router. I'll link to that one up above. But if you're doing those steps, you're securing your router, you're keeping it updated, and you have complex passwords, even if your Wi-Fi network is broadcast outside of your house, I think the risk here is pretty minimal. Without further ado, let me quickly show you how you can access the Wi-Fi transmit power settings of your router. I've previously made a video that details how to access your router settings. So I'm just gonna jump to my router settings homepage. And if you need to, you can check out that video for a reference before moving on. Now that we're in my router settings, we can take a look at adjusting the Wi-Fi transmit power. Before we move forward here though, I just wanna make note that if you have a different make and model of router, these steps might look different, but functionally they will be the same. You can be looking in the same areas and the user interface might be a little bit different, but don't worry, the steps should be pretty similar here. What we wanna do, we wanna go up to the advanced settings. From here, we wanna select wireless and then wireless settings. Another thing to note here is that if your router broadcasts multiple bands of Wi-Fi, for example, my router's dual band, it broadcasts a 2.4 gigahertz network and a five gigahertz network, you need to make these Wi-Fi transmit power settings changes for each band. So first, let's look at the 2.4 gigahertz network. As you can see here, transmit power. There's low, middle, and high. So if you wanna make a change, go ahead, you can select low here. And then what you need to do is you need to go over to the other band. You need to go and select the same thing, low, and then you would need to save that if you wanted to reduce the transmit power of your router. It really is that simple. I encourage you if you have multiple devices that are broadcasting a Wi-Fi network and you're having some problem with this signal overlap and handing devices off from one Wi-Fi network to another, play around with these Wi-Fi transmit power settings and see if that improves your experience. Another thing I should mention is that if you're finding that you're having trouble with these Wi-Fi overlap areas in your home, there are actually some settings you can change on your devices themselves. That's a topic for another video, but I'll make sure to link to that up above once that video is published. If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. If you found this video helpful or you learned a little bit about your home network, please give it a like. That way it will get shared with other people who can hopefully learn as much as you did. And also if you like the way that I present these videos, if you like the topics that I'm talking about, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and come along for the ride because I have plenty more topics that I'd like to talk about. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home and we'll catch you on the next one.